Hello everyone, Coach Carol back with you today with another segment from my Genealogy with AI series. These are all about how you can revamp your genealogy projects with the ultimate AI squad. Today I'm focusing in on perplexity. Perplexity is different to the other AI tools that I have been talking about in the last couple of episodes. It's more like a research tool than anything else. It may also help you with a variety of ways in which you can include historical context. There are some terms involved in using perplexity, and one of those is collections. And this is where you can organize your conversations with perplexity and keep like-minded ones together in a collection. Conversations are referred to as threads in perplexity. And you'll also need to know how to prompt it and what the follow-up queries are all about. There's quite a bit more involved with perplexity. So once again, you do need to decide what it is you need to achieve. And for me, I'm using perplexity more as a tool for that historical context where I can find out a little bit more about the era, location, events, and the impact on my family. Or if I'm doing specific research on people who have significance or prominence in history and particular places and occasions will also allow me to gather resources about each of these, including websites, images, and videos. In respect to historical context, you may wish to find out a little bit more about the location from which your ancestors have come from, and that could be a country, a county, a community, a town. And you might find that complexity can give you a broad range of information about that location. It has a vast history knowledge base. You may also want to find out a bit more about the activities in a particular era regarding your ancestors. And here's where perplexity comes into its own. It has also a vast knowledge about particular activities and cultures, and processes that have been used over the centuries. You can ask it all sorts of questions about that particular era that you're focusing in on. Within that era, there may have been events that you want to explore in more depth to see what impact they have on your family. So asking perplexity to unravel some of that, such as when the railway was introduced to Wales, it will give you historical context about the impact of that on the communities in that era in that location. Complexity is really good at specific research. You want to find out more, more about historical characters, people who have featured in history books over the years, then complexity will give you that information. It will lead you to websites and have even more. And tell you a bit more about the place that you're studying, whether that place be a village, the county, or even a building, a society or community within that village. Complexity will help you unravel some of that historical data. It'll also be able to help you with occasions, such as the traits and customs that have happened regarding church ceremonies for baptisms, marriages, 
burial and more. You can also have information about the practices of those times. As you use perplexity, be able to gather these extra resources in the form of websites, images and videos that will allow you to look even closer at those relevant sites. I will show you how that works in my demonstration in a moment. So that when you are using perplexity, it will give you sometimes websites, sometimes images, and sometimes videos that are relevant to your query. So now it's time to set up our collections and threads in perplexity. I'm now in my perplexity account. It's a free one. And this is the way in which it looks when you first come in. I've set it up in dark mode, which is a little clearer for you in these demonstrations. But you can set your own mode in your account by going down to your setting. You can also consider upgrading to the pro version. I'm not yet at the point of doing that. I'm happy with the free. But if you do have the pro version, it'll allow you to upload images and have a smarter AI and more pro search. On the left-hand navigation bar, you'll see that I'm on the home page. And I can start a new thread straight away. Underneath the home page is the Discover. It'll give you some of the latest news items. It has what to before from its database, a range of things, not specifically specifically on AI, a whole range, just like Google does. Underneath Discover is the library. And in your library, it contains the threads, conversations that you have with perplexity. Now, I have a few here. Some of them have been added to collections. Collections is perplexity's way of organizing the threads. You see, I have two collections here. And if I want to add some of my threads to a collection, I use the plus button here to add it to appropriate collection. It will then show you that at the bottom. Fairly simple to do. If I want to create a new collection, click on the plus button at the top right to give your collection a name. I think that will trigger your mind as to what conversations belong in here. Describe it in this box down below. And you can give it a specific instruction. Tell it what it is. I'll be a travel agent in this case. I'll just say you are still a genealogist. Make it private or shareable. And you can give it a little emoji. Look at all the others. Is it fire really? Got a title, an emoji, a description, an AI prompt that will help perplexity give you the right responses. And then at the bottom, click create. So I now have three collections. When you're working within one of the collections, 
people list the threads that belong to the project, the lower. In this case, genealogy two is about planning a genealogical journey. One of the threads in here is brainstorm some blog post topics. And this is a prompt that I've put in place up at the top. Where I've asked it to brainstorm some blog post topics that will appeal to those who are building their AI skills. And this is where complexity really becomes unique in its response. It gives you some sources at the top. In this case, it's a blog. The next one is one of my own blogs. It's picked up on those words. Another one here, another website. And five more to explore. And on the right hand side, it picks up on images that are relevant to that prompt query. These. And also videos. You picked up one of my videos there too. And a new one that I went to have a look at here. So it will broaden your research and take you off in different areas. So you need to be mindful of that. Keep on topic. Remember that you asked for a specific task up here. And the answer then is below, as you can see. There are some engaging blog post type topics. This one is a collection for AI tools and techniques. I like some of those. This is one that might appeal, overcoming reality brick walls with AI. And this one is quirky but nice. AI and genealogy, the good, the bad, and the future. Feeling, I think. And then specific topics on storytelling and presentation, visual, organizing and presenting. And then set topics for community and collaboration, connecting with other genealogists using AI, and AI ethics and genealogy. And at the bottom, it usually gives you a little statement. In this case, it's saying that these topics not only cater to the interests of genealogists, family historians, but also encourage the exploration of AI as a valuable tool and enhancing their research and storytelling capacity. I can then share that with people. It will give me a link. I can have it rewrite the response. This one. Just going to copy the response from here, or I can edit the query. Below are some related queries that I might like to explore such as how can generative AI enhance the storytelling of ancestors? I can use the plus button to dig a bit deeper. It goes on and gives me similar range of things, sources at the top, including websites, YouTube videos and more, and then the answer. So you can see how it builds on various things from your query with specific related queries that you can dig a little deep on. And I'm pleased to see that it picked up on another of my videos. Coming back to the home page, fairly simple to operate within complexity. Just requires text input, output. And it also gives you these other features such as websites, images, videos. So I hope that you will feel inspired to look into perplexity, to get it to help you with your research. I find it a very useful tool, and that's why I've included it in my AI squad. It's helping me revamp the genealogy journey. There's one more in the series to come, but I hope you've enjoyed this one and you can have a look at the other videos in my YouTube channel. Bye for now.